While two greenhouses may look very similar in structure, there are many options when it comes to covering a greenhouse or what type of uh, plastic or glass or co copolymer do you use to act as a barrier between the outside environment and how to protect your plants on the inside. So first off, greenhouses sometimes are called glass houses because you know they used to be made out of entirely glass. Glass is great because it offers excellent or high percentage of light transmission. It does have a very long uh, service life potentially decades. However, with some pros, also come some cons. So this material can shatter uh, if it gets loose, if there's wind, if there's snow load, uh, and it's typically more expensive material than some of the other options I'm going to talk about. Uh, it should be tempered glass to prevent shattering or breaking of a panel uh, that can help protect not only the plants, but the people working in the greenhouse. Also, when it's using glass, the panels, even for uh, small panels, for their size can be very heavy and hard to transport and store. Polycarbonate's another option. This is a strong lightweight material. It's almost as transparent as glass. And it's considered by some to be the jack of all trades due, its, due to its durability and ease with working with it. It lasts for about 10 years. Uh, so that's a good, for most growers, good longevity. And it can be used on you know, straight panels or it can also in some cases be added to true hoop houses. And that's polycarbonate. Polyethylene is the least expensive covering material. It's kind of like this uh, clean wrap is something to think about it. It does come in different thicknesses. Typically three mil to eight mil is the general um, kind of variance that it comes in. And that stands, those mils stand for millimeters. It typically only lasts for about four years. Uh, and that's the average material because uh, there's wind, there's a lot of stressors on that plastic. Six mil is considered in general to be the standard. 3 mil is kind of used for that one-time use of small structures. 8 mil can be uh, a little bit stronger in environments that are needing of that little bit thicker um, polyethylene covering. There's different types of polyethylene. There's anti-condensation ones, which reduces the dripping. Uh, okay, but this can also reduce or impact some of the light transmission. It can also be thermally protected if you're looking at using this structure in particularly colder months. It's delivered in large rolls of plastic, which can make installation, at least the first part of the installation, a little challenging, especially if it's um, a windy day, which you can kind of get everyone together. Uh, any wind, this large sail can easily catch that and make it very difficult to install. Then there's copolymers and resins. Ethylene, tetrafluoroethylene uh, is a copolymer. ETFE film is what it's called. Uh, this is a high-performance film that goes sometimes by the trade name F-Clean. It has potential benefits over all of the previous mentioned uh, covering materials. It has a very high light transmi transmission at about 93. also allows UV light at about 94%. And this can help with anthocyanin uh, production in the crop. It's a non-stick surface, so it does allow for easy snow removal, and it's very durable. It can last 25 years. This is kind of what it may look like. These are some structures made out of it. Because it's a resin, it originates as these kind of little plastic beads that are melted together to form this particular um, covering material. And I provide a little link uh, here if you want to check out this particular one in more detail. Now, considering coverings insulation ability, so this is something worth um, considering here, is the insulation of a particular um, covering for a greenhouse. This is important when you're growing in particularly cold weather. However, for plastics, having two layers inflated versus not having them inflated can have a big impact on the insulation or R value. Single pen glass has an R value of 0.95 compared to a double layer panel of 0.2. What this means is that the bigger the number, the greater the insulating factor and the less heat you're going to lose. Now, this is an example of hemp insulation, but as you can see, there's no uh, light trans transmission here. So we want to be mindful of that, that we still want to maintain good insulation ability also good light penetration. Therefore, double paneling is typically more efficient choice for greenhouses, glazed with glass, and also poly tunnels. A house would be easily insulated, but again, not allowing light through. This is looking at an infrared camera, and where the red and white is, you can see a lot more uh, heat escaping. In this case, this roof is causing a lot of heat and very warm in comparison to the side walls. That R value, that insulation I talked about, it's a commercial unit used to measure effectiveness of thermal insulation. Uh, how well does it uh, restrict or resist uh, conduction of heat? The larger the number represents a higher insulation value. So this is R21. This is a very high value. 
uh, greater healing, heating and cooling efficiency. So you can see this material is a very high um, R value because it's not allowing the heat from this blowtorch to ignite any of these matches. Lastly here, looking at some greenhouse coverings and insulations and R values, looking at some of the data. Uh, specific uh, brand names, product R values may vary slightly from these figures, but this gives you the general idea. Here's the website where I got this from. This shows the blower of inflating and creating a, uh, a two wall um, or a double layer, I should say, um, polyethylene structure. And you can see the difference here between double layer inflated R value versus um, just straight regular six mil polyethylene. In the double or twin walls, you can see an increase, so that's definitely worth consideration, even though it will be increased cost. If you're looking at growing during the cold months, having a high R value is definitely well worth it. Uh, you're welcome to pause the video here to take a look at this further, but this is again provides you with a general comparison of some polycarbonate, some polyethylene, and some glass, just to give you an idea of their insulating or R factor.